65. And that's that. So we're going to go through the part numbers of all the parts that you need to do the Torsen differential install. Uh, this is the, I believe, passenger side axle seal. Uh, I'm not sure if it's passenger or driver, but I think it's passenger. I'm sure you can read. The other one is a similar part number, but it has AA instead of BA. From this one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I thought it was still in the box. It's the same thing, but AA at the end. It's harder to see, but yeah, it's the same. Then you got your, what's called a taper roller bearing. There's the part number for the bearing itself. Okay. And here's the part number for the race. Now you got to move it, angle it, just like there. There you go. Alright, and if you're wondering what a taper roller is, this is what it is. You got your bearing it's tapered kind of hard to show on camera but you got a race on the inside here that's attached to all the bearings and you got a race over here that the taper roller sits inside and it rolls like that you're also going to need a press tool for these bearings and races I made this one on a lathe if you can't make one on a lathe at least get a chunk of aluminum you definitely want it to be aluminum because um, aluminum isn't going to mar the surface of the steel when you're hitting it with a hammer. If anybody needs to borrow this from me, I guess send me a PM. We can work something out. That's pretty much all the parts you'll need. Alright, it's taper roller install time. Uh, unlike the MTX-75, the Torsen does not have the speed sensor gear on the diff. It's actually elsewhere in the transmission. Transmission. I was giving him. So anyway, you want to make sure your cone is facing outward. If you put it upside down, you're in trouble. So the, far, the hardest part of putting the taper roller on is getting it started, because it is a very, very tight press fit, usually about three or four thousandths. So I'm just going to try to start tapping it just a little bit with my rubber mallet. Do not use a metal hammer at this stage. Eventually you'll feel it kind of get seated, you'll hear a change sound, and you can start using your press tool. And then, pull out the big gun. After every hit, you want to make sure that it's still level which obviously it's not, which you can see really well from that angle. So I'm going to hit it on this side now. Check the angle. More. Okay, I got to do it again. And then you just keep doing that. Make sure it's going on More. straight. There you go. All right, that's straightened out quite a bit. Stop or take the whole thing. Eventually you'll be getting down pretty close. You'll hear, you'll hear it start to change sound. You should be selling this tape. Annoying. There it is. I don't know if anybody else heard that ring. Yeah. But that's pretty much telling you that you're almost at the bottom. There's a lot more solid feel to the hammer now. Dude, you're done. <clears throat> and that's that. Now you'll notice that this surface is actually a little bit lower, but on the NTX-75 the differential sticks out above the bearing surface, which is why I have machined this little lip in here. Next step is removing the old axle seals. A couple of reasons to do this. Uh, they wear out and it makes it really easy to change the races. 
So you pretty much just take a screwdriver, get it good on there, and start hitting it up. Pretty simple procedure. And that's it. Now's the fun part. We get to use fire. Grab a torch. Light it. And you want to heat up around the race. Try to keep it even. The whole point here is to expand the case so that the race comes out easier. Here's another reason to remove the axle seal, because the axle seal would just burn. Also, do this in a well ventilated area. This smells really bad. It smells great. My head hurts. Ibuprofen, alcohol, and all this. Heat will kill it. This takes a while. Alright, uh, I've been heating it for about five minutes. Now I'm going to come from underneath it. Make sure your screwdriver is not touching the case and is only touching the back of the race. And you should be able to just lightly tap it up. If it's not a light tap, you need more heat. It should just easily come up like that, just tapping it. Enter Star Wars music here. And watch out when it pops up, because that thing is going to be hot. Alright, while it's still hot, you want to go right ahead and put a new race in. Hopefully you can do it while it's still warm so you don't have to heat it up again. Start off with the rubber mallet and move on to using the press tool. Checking for load. There's a shim on the other side. We don't have to worry about any shims or anything on oh. this side. We're just replacing the race over here. Now we grab our press tool, and since it's aluminum, it won't hurt the race surface. Alright, so I've been going around the case, or around the race, like this, and setting up the edge of the press tool on the race. Ugh. So anyway, it started making a different sound, like that, a really solid sound, like it's hitting the case. A ringing kind of. Yeah, that's, that's when you know it's seated. It's inside of the inside of the catch here. The bell housing side is much of the same, except you have a shim here in between the race and the case. And when you're getting this race out, you want to make sure that you're hitting the race and not the shim. If you hit the shim, you're going to mess it up. So just pay attention to what you're hitting the screwdriver with. to install this shim without, or I'm sorry, install the race without the shim so we can check the preload. Basically, just pound it in. Uh, preload checking is very important because the load that is on the bearings can be too much and it can be too little. So it's important to get it right. Uh, have these shims